how about uh, Brent Hundley out there for yeah. Kyler Murray? Were the Cardinals actually better when he got out there? He looked like Michael Vick wearing number seven, dipping and dodging, <laughs> getting past defenders, carving up the Seahawks defense like a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it looked People like. People in Arizona are going to start eating Thanksgiving Seahawk, oh. carving it up. You know, I can't even take Stop this seriously enjoying right this. now. <laughs> yeah, stop it. I'm you're, sorry. You're a terrible human. <laughs> No, I hope the Titans I mean, lose okay. devastatingly next week. No, ser- seriously, it, it, they go in with with injuries. To I mean, there's no Clowney, there's no Dwayne Brown, uh, there's no Shaquille Griffin and Quandre Diggs. And then during the game, Mike Upati gets hurt. And then also the big thing is Chris Carson gets hurt. And we're like, oh well, at least we still have pro size. And then he gets hurt. Yeah, which. And, it's and, the uh, least and, shocking injury yeah, of the day. Exactly, exactly. And it's something that, I mean, we've probably been waiting on. And not only that, but Pete Carroll says after the game that it sounds like Carson's going to be done for the rest of the season. And ProSize, at least out this week, they're expecting him to be out multiple weeks. Wayne Brown has to get a knee procedure done. That'll probably, I would assume, since they're having that done tomorrow, that'll probably hold him out against the Niners game as well. So, I mean injuries seem to be derailing this season toward toward the end of it. Injuries and suspensions, also, when you look at it. That, to me, that was at least part of the reason why I was watching the game. And, like, there were a lot of really frustrating things in the game. But as I was watching it, and my 13-year-old son is freaking out on the couch yelling at the television because the lineman just decided not to block people, I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know, this is frustrating. There are specific things that are happening in this game that are very frustrating. But overall, this team is playing with, like, 75 percent backups and yeah. like not only did they go into it really injured but then they almost immediately lost an offensive lineman then their best running back then the only other running back that has any experience on their team you're already without Clowney and Quandre Diggs who I think we agreed earlier this season yeah. were two huge impact players on defense so like all you have left is Wagner yeah you don't have Kendrick you don't have like you don't have the guys that you're looking for to make plays on defense. So I don't I don't it was difficult for me to feel too mad while I watched it, even though there was some stuff like the field goal thing where they took the delay they took the delay game penalty and it yeah. turned into a punt. The or, third and three where Pete Carroll decides to run the ball. Uh or when, another timeout early in the game yeah. when it's third and one right. and they get the playoff, but Pete Carroll has already called a timeout. Yeah. It's like it's third and one. Hand it to Chris Carson. And that's what they did, but they called a timeout right before. It's like, uh, it, there's so many things that are frustrating about this team, but I think the most, the thing that's the most frustrating is you look at this offense, and when DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, I mean, I don't think Metcalf had a catch the entire game, and I think Lockett had ended with one, and that didn't come until 11.59 left in the fourth quarter. I mean, there's something wrong there. If Jacob it's Hollister, not like you weren't throwing it to Turner yeah. and more. Yeah, and don't get me started about you. Seriously, again, John Ursua inactive yet again, and I'm about to blow. I thought this would be the week for sure. Me too. I mean, especially with <laughs> with the Josh Gordon suspension, and still no John Ursua, and still throwing it to David Moore and Malik Turner, and David Moore getting a first down and then fumbling the football. Uh, it's like Lockett had one catch. For 12 yards, he was targeted eight times. Yeah. Uh, Metcalf had only one target in the game. Just one target. And they mentioned on the broadcast, they were like, well, I mean, Peterson is following around Lockett, so he must be doing a really good job. Well, then who's covering DK Metcalf? He can't get more than one target in a game? And some of their play calling towards the end when they when they were down, and it's normally like, all right, this is when the usually all the other teams turn into a pumpkin and Russell Wilson snaps into who he usually is, and they pull off the Cinderella story. Instead, they start... I realized that I kind of reversed that metaphor a little bit, but Travis Homer... Sure do like pumpkin scotch. Yeah, I love him. (laughs) Travis Homer is your third string running back, and there was a series, there was a couple series in a row, where two series in a row, they gave it to him either throwing or running six times in a row, and they went three and out both times. It was six Travis Homer plays it's a in a row. Old strategy. God. It is it's giving it to your for him. giving it to your third string <laughs> running back, and it did not pay off. Yeah, it's things like that. It's like yeah, we get it when Chris Carson's in there trucking dudes, 
you want to grind it, give it to him because he's arguably one of the best running backs in the league too. But when you're everybody's starting to go down, injuries are happening left and right, who do you turn to? Your best players, not your third yeah. string running back. Homer Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> no. I I do have a conspiracy theory that just occurred to me. Okay. What if the reason that the Seahawks are playing better on the road is because the other teams are messing with <laughs> the communication between the sideline and Russell and Russell's calling the plays. That's I'm just putting that out there. Could be. We know cheating's rampant in the league. <laughs> Cheating is rampant in the New England Patriots. Is it rampant in the league? I'm just, for the purpose of this conspiracy theory, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Seems fair. <laughs> but it does bring up an interesting conversation about the playoff picture. And you kind of answered that in the two-minute drill question. But if the Seahawks, I mean, they've been better on the road, which is a super weird flip in the script of what the Seattle Seahawks team has been under Pete Carroll. Yeah, usually they're the home dominating right. home field advantage. But next week, they play the 49ers. Um, and it's for the conference, or for the division championship. Now, they'll know that's the night game. There's no Monday game. And the only two afternoon games that happen are irrelevant to the playoff picture. They'll know after the morning games whether or not they have a shot at a first-round bye. And it depends on some things not only that are going to happen in the Green Bay-Minnesota game on Monday this week, but then next week, you know, what's going to happen with the Saints and, and, and the other teams that are up in that top spot. If the Seahawks go into that game on Sunday night knowing that they don't have a shot at a first-round bye, would they rather win the division and play against a good wildcard team? Or if they know that they could be the better wildcard team, would it be more beneficial for them to lose and play whoever wins the NFC least, whether it's the Eagles or the Cowboys? Yeah, I mean, that's an excellent conversation because, yeah, it'd be a road game, but we've already mentioned they do, they've done better on the road. And the opponent is a big deal. And the opponent is a huge deal. And also, if you could rest a couple more guys, that might get him back closer to 100%. I mean, especially Quandre Diggs. He's coming off a fairly high ankle sprain is what they're saying. So if you try and rush him out there in that game, that will set him back for the following weekend. So, I mean, you have some, I think you have some business decisions to make there. You know, you, you try and get some people healthy if you know right, exactly. that you can't get that first round by. I mean, I don't think they're going to do that because that is so counter to what Pete Carroll does usually. But on the injury side of things, I think if they have an excuse to hold them, somebody out, if they can't get that first round by. But what, I mean, at this point though, with their running back situation, which is going to be Travis Homer and whoever they pick up off the street. I, I'm excited about Homer. I think he showed some good things tonight. But I don't want him getting as many, many carries as Chris Carson did. And then you sprinkle in some other guys, you know, give him some rest. But this, this offense could turn to the 2015 Seahawks in a heartbeat back when they were having so many rushing struggles. Was that 2015? There was a season in there where Russell, at the end of the season, just went bonkers, and they were throwing the ball over the place. And I see that as the only adjustment you can really make if you want to actually make a playoff run because you don't have your horses in the backfield anymore. You have some offensive line injuries. This has to turn into a Russell Wilson quick-release offense, and you better have some receivers that can get off the line quickly and get off the jams and make sure they're good in the slot and John or Sue. Yeah, and the hard part, <laughs> you, you need John or Sue. You do. The hard part about, like, if you decided, hey, I'm going to rest guys and make sure we're healthy, you only have so many players on the team. Exactly. And only 53 you, guys on a roster. You so. really need your defense and you need your offensive line to mm -hmm. be healthy and ready. Yeah. Because even if they decide they want to start flinging the ball all over the place, I think, you know, the Arizona game proved you cannot do that. If you can't block people, that's and true. they could not block people, yeah. even when they were only rushing four guys all game. Mostly, they only rushed four guys, yeah. and they were still but getting to Russell. It's, and they were it's getting a shift. Arguably, Russell would do better if they didn't put the offensive line out there, and he just <laughs> could see where the defensive line was coming from and run away from them and throw the ball. That's an interesting point. Just, but I said arguably. Like you, like <laughs> don't you, at me. You said Daniel that like if the Seahawks decided to rest some guys and not go for that. Um, division championship, it would be counter to what Pete Carroll does. It's actually counter to like 
what basically every NFL team would do. Like, yeah. if you have a chance to go win the division and get a home game, that's what everybody wants. Yeah. So for them, if they were to decide that, like, hey, you know, do what some of the old Indianapolis Colts teams did in Week 17 when they would basically rest most of their star players in the in the last game, if the Seahawks were to do that, it would be such a huge controversy. Mm-hmm. It would be something that, like, everybody nationally would be talking about because there would be some really conflicted opinions about whether or not that was okay or whether or not it was the right thing to do. Absolutely. I, Especially when you're playing for the division title. Right. Because those titles. other teams had already locked that up. Right, exactly. But yeah. I was just using it as a for instance for, like, this is what you could potentially do to get your team healthy. Yeah, exactly. Because basically that's what they'd be doing at that point is saying, well, maybe we'll win this game, but if we don't win this game, we don't care. Yeah. It, they're not going to, like, tank and purposely lose. Yeah, they're not going to... They I would mean, do organizational tanking like basketball teams. Do. Exactly. I mean, they would play... John Ursua. And Geno Smith. Yeah, maybe Ursua could play quarterback. Hey, there you go. Because I bet he could get some yards. I really think he could rush for 100 yards as a quarterback. <laughs> and that's with me <laughs> having no line. idea what he's capable of or ever having seen him play, really. <laughs> oh, man. Just based that's... on the fact that you seem but to love him so much. I, yeah, you know... May, it might be undue love, but from watching his college highlights, where he was an absolute beast, and then watching him in the preseason, where it seemed like he not only synced up with the backup quarterbacks, but also with Russell Wilson, and then hearing stories behind the scenes of who stood out with the young receivers when they were working out with Russell Wilson in the summer, John Ursua's name was at the top of that list constantly, with that connection that he gained and it seemed and Doug's ba- Doug Baldwin's name was mentioned over and over just that that little like hey he knows how to find the open spots in the field where Russell can find him when stuff goes wrong or when plays break down or when the other teams in his zone he's the guy who can find an open spot and yet he hasn't even got a shot and so it's it's really frustrating it's, and it, it wouldn't be frustrating if all of the other receivers were good you know like when they had Lockett Metcalf and Gordon I was like, you know, that, that's okay. You know, that makes sense that Ursu is not getting a shot. And now you... But uh, I mean, did you not see Malik Turner's 23-yard catch today? Yeah, I did. Or and then David I, Moore's 21-yard catch today? And then he fumbled. Well, he yeah, the ball. And, yeah, and then he fumbled. And then... He also had one rush for 19 yards. And then Malik Turner's... The rush actually looks good. I like yeah. him running. That, well, he's not bad at running. Maybe we can run him at, at running, running back. back. Yeah. yeah. That might be an option with Dude, what they're looking at now. Montgomery kind of a deal. But... You look at Malik Turner, he also had one that was floating right at him, and he jumped about two seconds too early, was coming down, and the he was did one of those jumps like, oh, no! And, the ball's going, and then he had one, like, right after that where they throw it deep. And he didn't run through it. And he it. didn't run through oh, it. Oh, my god! He gosh. just stopped. That was so I, frustrating. I would drop him. I, just for that, it's mind it, numbing. I I know it that's the like wrong. I know that's the wrong call. Mind. But, oh my numbing. gosh. Well, then he looked around like oh. he didn't know the ball was coming yeah. to him. It was that was like, I, I mean, I don't know if he could have gotten to it, but I would have at least liked to see if he could have gotten exactly. to it. Exactly, and that's the thing. It's like, he, does Pete think that he's giving Ursua a fresh uh, red shirt? Yeah, like, yeah. Do we need to let Pete know that there's no red shirts in the NFL? Well, we want we want to have control of them for another year. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not how it works, Coach. 